Legion, the story begins. Written by Charles Swain. Narrated by Sean Anton. Chapter 2 Hatch and Sophie were in danger because they trusted the humans. And I let my guard down. Never again. They must have thought I was dead. The only reason I could think of as to why I was still breathing. But I had to get up. I couldn't let them die. Perhaps it was by some miracle, but my sight slowly started to return. The intense pain I was once burdened with began to fade. I heard the loud blasts and the sounds of footsteps. I had a little time. Slowly my vision returned, and I noticed no one was there. The hunters must have gave chase to Sophie and Hatch. I knew the foul scent of man and leapt to my feet. I tracked down the first soon-to-be victim. His weapon was over his shoulder, and he was in a stance, as if he was just waiting, waiting for something to come out of the woods. I walked up behind him. Then, I locked my jaws around the weapon. I pried it away from his hands. What? How can this be happening? We killed you! You should be dead! The paralyzed fear in his eyes was satisfying. And so, I went for the kill. I lunged for his throat. But he ran. He went back the way he came, to the death box. He was so desperate he thought he could escape by running behind it, but I could see him through the glass. He jumped inside of it. I stayed focused. All of a sudden, the glass cracked, then shattered shortly after. It was made by no weapon. I couldn't have done it. I thought about how much I wanted revenge. My blood boiled and then suddenly the large metal box was engulfed in flames. It combusted and made a loud noise. The man was on fire. Horrific screams coming from him, almost endless. I was overjoyed by this, a grin from ear to ear. He ran so frantically, as if trying to outrun the flames themselves. Let the flesh burn. Let your outside match what you truly are on the inside. Let your cries be heard around the world. It was so satisfying as he fell onto a tree. Still burning, he started to give up on life. My happiness faded, realizing I still had to make sure my comrades were safe. I ran through the woods. Dark and murky was the night, and the thick air made it that much harder to see. No stars to guide me, for the woods blotted them out. There was Hatch. He was running as a hunter was right behind his tail. Hatch ran into an old, rusty shelter of sorts. From what I could tell, there was yellow grass inside and the outside was painted red. I had to follow before the hunter got to him, or just take him out like I did the other human. Was that me? I remembered the kind of pain those weapons brought upon me. I wished the human could have a taste of his own medicine. Oddly enough, as I was thinking that, the hunter turned his favorite friend on himself. He pointed it at his head. What are you doing? How the hell are you doing this? Just stop whatever it is you're doing, and uh, I'll never bother you again. Out of curiosity, perhaps, Hatch slowly stepped out of the red shelter to see what was going on. All I could think of was how sweet it would be if the man did off himself. Just as I had the thought, there was a loud blast. The man's head exploded. I could see pieces of bone laying over the grass. I felt a sense of relief, and then happiness overwhelmed me again. What just happened? <laughs> you were there. You know just as much as I do. 
Now, come on, Hatch. We have to rescue Sophie. Legion, what did you do to that man? Your eyes clearly aren't working. They must be in even worse shape than Noah's. That man offed himself. Don't you find it a bit odd? He was aiming to kill me a few moments ago. What made him suddenly change his mind and kill himself? What do you know that you aren't telling the rest of the pact? I don't know a damn thing! You're treading on thin ice. I don't know what goes on inside a man's mind. They're vile creatures. I only know he didn't have the mindset to end his life before you showed up. Then, Noah's voice changed. He gave me a confused stare. How? How are you still alive? You should be dead. You died. I saw you with enough holes to be Swiss cheese. And now look at you. Not a single scratch. How do you explain that? I can't, okay? I don't know what's going on with me. I just know we're wasting time while our friends are in danger. Do you want to keep asking stupid questions? We're going to talk about this. Later. I could hear the disgruntled tone of Hatch as he looked away, as if some kind of trust barrier had been broken. And so he followed my lead at last. I then heard a few loud blasts come from the distance. As we got closer, I could see the two hunters trying to prey on Sophie. Damn it, James! Just hit the dog already! Bitch is faster than Grease Lightning, Marcus! Never seen a dog run so goddamn fast in my life! Does it have jet fuel running through its veins or something? I told you, these aren't ordinary dogs. Let's see if she can outrun a bullet. <laughs> the sky was completely dark, even darker in the thick wood, as I couldn't count on those bright spots of light in the sky to show me the way. The hunters didn't stay to one spot. They kept moving to hone in on their target. <sighs> But if only they knew who the real targets were. They had lights attached to their weapons, but no matter how clear my vision was, I couldn't see Hatch anymore. Did he bail? No. I could still sense his presence. A blast came from that dreaded man-made contraption. A blur zoomed by, so the man used his fire stick again. The blur went the other way. The roaring sound of wind behind was heard. I figured it out. It wasn't a blur at all. It was Sophie. How did she learn to move so fast? Before the man could fire again, his weapon was confiscated. I had no idea how it was all happening. And then Hatch himself appeared in the distance, holding the man-made weapon. Humans were weak on their own. I had to figure out how to get the weapon away from the other man. It was growing later in the night, and the man looked paranoid and frantic. Good. Let them know what it's like to be defenseless. With the weapon now pointed at Hatch, Sophie came by at breakneck speed and took the weapon away. We had the two men cornered. They would feel my bite if they dared to run. Please, we don't want to die. I don't like the concept of death either, but that didn't stop you trying to destroy me. Let me introduce you to the same pain I just experienced. Legion, no. No killing. I've seen enough death in my life. <sighs> not this again, Sophie. I'm not in the mood. What's gotten into you? We're not bloodthirsty killers. You think I'm some kind of damn heartless monster? Sophie, we let them go and they'll just send more humans after us. Sophie's right, Legion. We're your friends. We're not warriors that will just bow down to every command you make. We'll take orders, within reason. It's reasonable to think these humans aren't just going to let us go, eh? We must set an example. We could tie them up, then roast them alive by the fire. You're not the same Legion we once knew. You've changed. This is a sickness. You need help. I'm perfectly fine. It's both of you that have your head screwed on wrong. Out of all of us, it's you that those white coats must have fucked up the most. Noah has been there the longest, and even he isn't trying to chomp on their bones. Only a fool would confuse logical sense with insanity. As I spoke sharply, instruments began to rise from the ground. One such instrument had a wooden handle and a long blade with a bunch of triangles on the bottom. 
the instrument slowly approached the man on the right side. It neared his throat. What the fuck are you doing? Hollered Sophie. Why were they looking at me? I wasn't doing that. Was I? The blade slashed across the man's throat. He was holding onto his neck in pain, but it would be all over soon. Cowering on the ground with his eyes wide open, he was stone dead. The only man left tried to plead for his life, as if we would give it to him. His comrades had referred to him as James. Please, run. I love to hunt. Makes the kill more fun that way. I have a daughter and a son at home. I just want to see my children and my wife again. We got a dog of our own. A great Pyrenees, in fact. Legion, if you kill this man, you're on your own. Do you hear me? Don't ever ask for our help again. You can't be serious. Dead serious. Want to test me? The stern and cold tone in Sophie's voice. I knew she meant it this time. What are we supposed to do, huh? Let him come with us? We don't even know where we're going. He's a human. Humans can carry those man-made weapons. He could prove useful, said Hatch. The rain started to pick up in the night sky. But at least the dreadful roar had ceased. I couldn't believe we had to take the man with us. But I couldn't break up the pact. Hatch, go check up on Noah. Should be able to get him to follow us now. Bring him back here. He was reluctant at first, but eventually did what I told him to. I approached the man. James, is it? If you want to see your daughter and son again, you'll do exactly as I say. Just promise me you won't hurt them! I don't have to promise anything. You try and run away, and your children will be dead and buried before you get home. Legion! Ah, uh, yeah, you're right, Sophie. Humans don't deserve such kindness. Guess we'll skip the burial. My eyes locked on the man's. Fear was power. Something Sophie simply didn't understand. The asshole wouldn't dare betray us. At last, Noah was himself again. It was too risky to keep moving when the sky was dark, and the air was so thick. It would be best to move on once the beam of light was shown onto the world again. So, we found a resting spot. We decided it was best to take turns keeping watch over the human. We had James make a fire for us. It was quiet. Perhaps everyone was contemplating about the events that transpired. Resting by the fire was the first time since the escape that my comrades relaxed a bit. However, I was on high alert. I never allowed myself to let my guard down. Not until all of us were safe. Finally, Noah spoke up. So... I think it's clear that something is going on with us. Whatever happened in that lab is causing us to change. Change how? I don't know, but Sophie is at least three times faster than any animal I've ever seen. I wonder if it has anything to do with those lacerations. Hatch then glanced over to Noah. And what about you? Have you noticed anything different about yourself? What do you mean? Exactly what I said. Look, Sophie runs faster than a speed demon. Legion can apparently levitate objects and blow things up, and I can practically turn damn near invisible. Whatever is going on, it's all from what those white coats have done to us. They must have been experimenting with you as well. What do you make of all this, demon? I said to the hunter. I don't know what you're all barking at. I can only understand you. The others are just barking and grunting randomly, he said. I noticed the hunter take out a small blade. It had a wooden handle attached. What the hell are you doing? Preparing. We're gonna have to hunt at some point. The hunter took a stone and scraped the weapon over it. This gave me an idea. Those stitches on Noah's eye. Can you cut them? I suppose I could, James said hesitantly. His eye is probably closed up for a reason, though. I'm not a doctor. And I'm not a surgeon. But I will cut you open and operate if you don't do as I say. I followed with a low roar sound in my voice, so he knew I was serious. Are you going to growl at him every step of the way? He's already agreed to help us, said Hatch. He has to learn that the only reason he breathes is because I allow it. 
You talk about how evil the humans are, but you're the one that sounds like a damn monster right now. How dare you, Sophie? I'm the one that saved our asses. If it wasn't for my planning, we'd still be at the lab being dissected. James rose up from his spot and shouted, All right, I'll do it. Just stop hounding me. No pun intended. He took the blade from his hand and approached Noah. I watched and looked on as Noah backed up and snarled, baring his fangs. It's all right, Noah. He's not going to hurt you. You're damn right he won't. My chompers will see to that. I had the situation handled just fine. But, of course, Sophie had to be the one to act like the saviour. Noah, he's just going to help you. We need to know what those white coats did to your eye. I promise he won't hurt you. Noah grunted, but agreed for Sophie's sake. Then, he stared down the man. Well, get on with it then. The man approached again, and this time Noah didn't waver. His knife slowly cut into the stitches. After a moment or two, the hunter stepped back. Can you see anything out of your eye? It seemed as if he was trying to adjust, slowly opening his eye. It still looked red and bloodshot, but it looked as if something mechanical was in place where the iris of his eye should have been. My god, what have they done to you? What is it? The machine inside his eye was moving, a red beam of light in the center of it. The beam seemed to zoom in and expand. I can see you through this eye, but none of you look the same. You come in colors. Colors? I shrugged, looking at James. He says that he can see colors. He can see infrared, most likely. His answer confused me. I never heard of such a thing. What are you going on about? I'm saying he can see people or animals just by reading body heat. It makes them easier to spot in the fog or at night. Anything else? I asked Noah. As he focused his eye, the beam in it turned blue. Now I can see all your insides. More distinctly, your bones. I explained to James what Noah had said, word for word. I think that dog, your friend, is now seeing an x-ray vision. I wasn't familiar with any of these terms. I just knew that Noah was given that curse for a reason, like all of us. Then I heard something disturbing. I turned and it looked like another death machine, but it was hovering in the air. Is the whole fucking military after you or something? That's a chopper! Said James. If you know what it is, then you know how to kill it. You have to take out the person inside. Doubt I'll be of much help. It looks armored. The person inside controls the machine. So, that's how it works. They can control those death machines somehow. What do you suggest we do? Run like hell! As we dashed off in a mad sprint, Noah stayed put. I stopped and circled back. I was going to let him have it, but something was obviously going on. The mechanical eyes zoomed so that the eye lens was completely open. Noah stared down the wicked beast. He didn't seem angry or sad, just focused. Those Gatling guns should have fired a thousand rounds into you by now! Gatling guns? Was the hunter talking about the rotating cylinders on each side of the hovering machine? Are there various types of guns? Is that what you're holding? You don't get out much, do you? The Gatling gun stopped turning, and the once loud noise coming from the machine was quiet. Now what? I think the engine is shutting down! Are you doing this, Noah? Can he really control these machines somehow? Noah snapped out of his trance and ran in the opposite direction. The machine was descending and coming toward us. We stormed out of its path as it impacted onto the ground. <laughs> Noah approached his mechanical eye, made some kind of noise, and the top of the machine opened. There was a human inside. It was ironic how humans plead for their own life, but don't hesitate to take it. James had his gun pointed at the man, while Noah and Sophie yanked him out of the machine. I wanted to kill him. It wasn't safe to let any man live. Well, what do we do now? 
What, is this your first time interrogating someone? Asked James. With the end of the gun, he smashed it on the man's face. Who do you work for? Why did you try to kill us? There was no answer. It didn't seem like the human was going to give us any answers. Then, James pointed his gun at the man's leg. You have five seconds to answer before I blow off your kneecap! Don't fuck with me! That seemed to get the man's attention. It wasn't after you! It was after the damn dogs! Why? Why would you want to know? Because you tried to fire at me! I'm making it my business! <sighs> you wouldn't believe me anyways. I just saw a dog with a cybernetic eye take down a chopper, so try me! It's our job to either try and bring the dogs back or to kill them all, with the exception of Legion. Why does the lab want the dogs back so bad? Just let them go! We can't let them go! Millions of dollars have been used to make them the perfect weapon! Weapon for what? The human gave a long pause. James and I silently waited for an answer. I wanted to know. To finally know why I was tortured from the moment I was brought into this world. For what? There had to be something more. All of mine and my comrades' suffering summarized into two words. For war? James questioned. That's right. No longer will good men have to die in battle. Dogs can be trained. They're loyal. We raise their intelligence, speed, even ability. And suddenly they can be trained into killing machines. One of those mutts already has the comprehension of the human language. Not just English, either. James slowly looked at me. What other languages do you know? I haven't a clue. I just want those fuckers to stop following us. Legion, care to share the info? Remember, we can't understand humans like you can. He says we're going to be used for war, to fight their pointless battles for them, to go in their place. Do you see how low on the chain we are to mankind now? No more than slaves to accomplish their goals. My comrades stared at me confused, then coldly turned to the man that tried to kill us. What do we do now, Legion? I slowly looked at James. I want to go back. Are you insane? I took in a long sigh, resting my feet as I had a moment of reflection of the troubles that had weighed us down so far. <sighs> no. I realize now that they'll never stop hunting us. If I ever want peace or to live freely, I need to go back to the source of my misery. As much as I knew my comrades would despise the idea, I knew it was the only way. I repeated to them what I'd told James. Give me one good reason why you want to go back. Hatch hollered. What do you hope to accomplish? Firstly, I want to know more about what they have done to us. Secondly, I want to ensure we're never pursued again. Sophie stepped in. By doing what exactly? And don't sugarcoat it. What do you plan to do when we get there? Any means necessary. Even lethal force if it comes down to it. Everything has to be violence when it comes to you. It's the only thing humans understand. They can be rational, said Hatch. In a bullseye, I answered right back. You think I'm taking that chance? I told you that I wouldn't jeopardize the pact. You know what we've been through. You all do. Do you think those monsters cared when we were the ones suffering? I'm not going to repeat myself. You know how I feel about this, Sophie replied. God damn it, Sophie! It's not all about you! You've all been with me since the beginning. If my sacrifice meant all your safety, I would risk my life in a heartbeat. No one wants your sacrifice. I've seen enough blood. One more person dies on your command, and I swear... You're not fucking leaving the pact, Sophie. Whoa, calm down, Legion. No one wants to pick a fight. Noah piped up. Maybe we should consider what Legion is talking about. First, we need to discuss what to do about the man in the flying machine. Hatch suggested. He's a threat to us. We need to eliminate that threat. You will do no such thing. Where is your pride? You should be siding with your fellow canine. Where are your morals? I hate to ask, but why can't he just come with us? We can keep him in line. And it would be great having someone with us that knows about the operations in the lab. Said Noah. 
The more humans we have to watch out for, the more danger we're in. There's no nice way to say this, so I'm just going to give it to you straight. One of the humans has to die. Where do you get off thinking that you can just... My order will not be compromised. Either one of you do it or I will. I had enough of the endless debate. I drowned out what everyone was saying. I wanted to see what the extent of my power was. I focused my attention on what James referred to as the chopper. Suddenly, the four blades on top broke away from the rest of the machine. My gosh, Legion. Did you just do that? Asked Hatch. I didn't answer. My attention was on the blades. I had them spin, slowly at first, in a similar motion as it had done when it was attached to the machine. Then I made it spin faster and approached the man that was once in the flying contraption. He hadn't moved and seemed paralyzed with fear. What the fuck is this madness? cried the hunter. I agreed to help you until now. I didn't agree to partake in a senseless murder. There was no such thing as senseless deaths when it came to humans. The spiral blades drawled nearer, and the man finally took a step back. Then, another. Oh God! Help me! Look in the face of your new God just before you meet your end. Screams of horror emerged as he backed himself into a tree. The blade started to cut into his skull. I heard a shot from James's gun. The propeller must have ricocheted the blast. I didn't care. I was going to deal with James later. Crimson streams of red poured out of the pathetic human. An elevated sense of happiness came from me. I, I couldn't help myself. The blade chipped away at his bone, tearing into his demon organs. I could almost taste the blood and smell the stench of iron. I loved watching the red water cover the tree behind. One last horrific and desperate scream coming from the human before I ended his life. He was long gone before the weapon finished cutting him in half. Now, there was one less demon in the world. Thank you.